here in the meeting, and John will introduce his panel. Good afternoon. Um, as many of you know, yes, I'm John Brown with Oasis Senior Advisors of Austin and Central Texas. We guide families uh, through senior living and care decisions. Uh, we support them on their journey to find the perfect fit uh, for their Oasis, where they can thrive and get the care that they need. Our free confidential unbiased services are essential uh, for helping families during challenging transitions. Whether they're moving, senior living, moving to senior living or discharging from a hospital or rehab, uh, Oasis is there to help. Um, so today, you know, we want to talk about part of the aging process, right? Aging is a universal experience. Everyone's doing it. Uh, having the knowledge and resources to need uh, that you need during a stressful stage of your life. Um, so we we can manage the challenges you face without a lot of anxiety in the unknown. Uh, life's complexities increase as we age. Senior care, health care, the aging process itself can all present a maze of, of options. Just like Capital City and Village offers a supportive community uh, for you, the Central Texas senior industry has our own version of a supportive community. So we have, uh, it's called Senior Industry Services. Think of SIS as a resource partner. Uh, just like Capital City Village, it provides us uh, that provides support for you. SIS acts as a village for the senior care professionals. We launched it last year. It's a networking group of, uh, for experts, but it also has comprehensive online resources for families and seniors to find businesses and, and get education. So if you're looking for resources or educational material, you can go to www dot senior industry services dot com. So today we've assembled a panel of senior care experts ready to answer your questions about home health, home care, hospice. These are often very confusing topics for many seniors. Um, again, uh, we'll kind of use this to bridge the gap uh, between the two villages. So, uh, so we'll we'll let John start since he's on the end. This is John Mackey. And he'll tell you a little bit about his company, then Audra, and then Juan. Each one will tell you a little bit about what they do, a little bit about their background and their company, and then we'll open it up for questions. People Hi. speak up. Well, my, uh, my name is John Mack. I'm with Capital Home Health. Uh, we're a local family owned business here in the Austin area. We have a location in Temple and one in uh, San Antonio as well. And we provide home health services that are intermittent skilled care in patients' homes. Uh, a lot of our business are knee replacement, uh, hip replacement, spine surgery patients, ankle surgery patients. However, we have a particular, you know, based on the patient's diagnosis, whether it's congestive heart failure, Parkinson's, uh, AIDS, HIV, cancer, whatever, we have a specific program to help with any one of those diagnoses. So our whole goal is to keep the patients out of the hospital and try to minimize and reduce the risk of them going back to the acute side, which is the hospital today. Our services are covered under Medicare uh, at 100%. Uh, they do require a face-to-face -face visit with a physician a 90 day, within 90 days before we start care or 30 days after we start care. So we typically send out, depending on what the doctor orders, we sent out a uh, nurse to an RN to come out and do an evaluation, check vital signs, go over all the medications, help manage that, make sure their pain's under control. Uh, you know, the last thing we want is for a patient to go back to the hospital because they're in severe pain from a hip replacement. Uh, the next thing we send out usually is a physical therapist. That physical therapist goes out and does their separate evaluation, right? And so they do what's called a home safety evaluation. And so they'll make recommendations like putting, installing grab bars in bathrooms and things like that. They'll probably look at some rugs that Mrs. Jones has and recommend to remove those temporarily for a few months while we're providing care in the home. Uh, the occupational therapists, what they work with are called ADLs, activities of daily living, right? Getting dressed, transferring to the toilet, taking a shower, buttoning your clothes, all those things that become challenging based on your diagnosis or based on having a surgery or an accident or something and being in the hospital. 
Uh, we provide speech therapy also as well. That's for the patients that are having cognitive deficits, deficits or they're having speech impairments, maybe from a stroke or some diagnosis like that. Uh, we, have, we provide home health aid services to help patients uh, assist with bathing. Most of the falls that patients encounter a lot of times are in the bathrooms. And so we wanna minimize that risk of them having a fall. So that's why we provide that home health aid for that particular service. Our medical social workers come out and they are the ones that provide resources for a patient being a different level of care. Maybe they're not, they don't have enough family support at home and they live alone. And so that social worker is going to recommend them to get connected to a independent living, assisted living, memory care, based on what those that patient's needs are. So, uh, you know, with home health care, we have to have, it's all about an outcome, right? And we have to have a good outcome. Otherwise, Medicare does not reimburse us. So we have to have, uh, the patient make progress, right? And they've got to get better. And so we run in 60 day certification periods, right? So from the time that that nurse comes out on the evaluation, she comes back out 60 days later and determines if that patient still has a skill of need, right? So if the patient still can benefit for some more PT or they're not quite strong enough, then we'll keep them off for another surgery. But the whole goal is to meet their needs and reach their goals and then talk about a discharge plan then. Has anybody had a knee replacement before or hip replacement? Mm -hmm. So what that looks like is your surgeon was at the hospital, did that surgery. You might've been in there one, two or three days. Back in the day, it used to be three days and they would discharge. One now night. they got it down to one day. <laughs> one <night>. Medicare <laughs> is cutting so much right now at the acute level and at all these different levels of care. Uh, so. They most likely they set you up with home health or you went to an inpatient rehab. So I'm just guessing it was home health, correct? Um, Did you have a physical therapist come out there? Physical therapist, and I, I blew her mind because <laughs> she was too vigorous. And I said, do you, do you have a protocol for a more mature individual? <laughs> and it just discombobulated her. So she, she kind of went down deal, but besides that, it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> so so with, with, a patient, <laughs> with a patient like yourself, we have all these surgeons, and we have a specific protocol that that surgeon set up for us visiting so many times for the first week, so many times the second week, and then the third week. And our ultimate goal is to get the patient where they no longer need our services, right? And so we want to continue getting them stronger and make sure that they're safe and, uh, and keep them out of the hospital. No, I got a different PT person worked out well. Yeah, and usually you have a PT that comes out, does your initial evaluation, and then you get a physical therapy assistant that does mm -hmm. the follow-up subsequent visits, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, our goal is to continue to keep you at a level of care that's a lot less expensive than keeping you in an inpatient rehab or skilled nursing facility rehab, right? So we've got all these baby boomers now that are getting <laughs> hip and knee replacements, and spine surgeries and all those things. But, you know, what I can tell you, not every home health agency is the same, right? Uh, and I would, I would encourage all of y'all to look up our Google reviews online because who's the best advocate for us is our patients, our previous patients. So I encourage you to look at that. Um, what what questions can I answer for y'all? Yeah, we'll go to Audra and then okay. Juan, and then we'll, we'll open it up for Q and A. Okay, sounds good. I'm Audra Cunningham. I work with Comforts of Home Healthcare. We're a hospice group, and so hospice is a heavy subject. I know I watch everybody's face as soon as I say it. Um, hospice actually has not been around in the U.S. very long. As of last month, it was 50 years. So my husband, the Price is Right, the Rolling Stones, all are older than hospice. And so that conversation is fairly new. And so for hospice, our entire goal, much like um, with home health, is that we want to be able to surround and support the person that's in need. And so whenever a patient comes to us, as soon as you have a life-limiting or terminal diagnosis, we want to be there to support you. We'd rather support you for six months than support you for two weeks. And so with our services, we're able to provide a primary care physician. Um, this is our medical director that can come out. We have got a nurse. Our nurse is going to be the captain of the ship. They're going to come out at least once a week. That nurse is going to be the person that reaches out, 
for the family is really your, you know, your eyes on. This is what's happening day to day. This is where we are in progression. We have a CNA that comes out, which once again is a certified nursing assistant. They're going to come out and help with bathing and the ADLs as discussed before. We also are going to have a homemaker. And so a homemaker is someone that can come out that can help with prepping meals or can come out and help with laundry. Sometimes we want to stay at home as long as possible. That's important to us. So I'm assuming I'm well, I'll just ask who here would want to stay at home if they found out they had a terminal illness. That's where they wanted to be. It's the same for me. And so sometimes if it's we're not, I wouldn't want to. It's right. just that I'm already past that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you know where everything is, it's comfortable, it's easy to recognize if somebody needs something. Oh, I need paper clips there in the drawer on the right-hand side, all the way in the back underneath the tea towels. It's where they're at. You know where things are. No, I've been there a year and I'm still unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead, I'm not typical. Oh, no, it's <laughs> fine, it's fine. But with a homemaker, sometimes that creates an option for somebody to stay home longer. Yeah. before we're looking for something like placement, before we're looking for something like having a caregiver that comes in and is with us longer in the home, somebody that can come and do laundry and help us prep a couple of meals. We have a medical social worker, which once again, that's going to be somebody that's going to find you resources that you need in the community. We're not just medical where we come in to care for you for your disease. We're going to care for that whole person. I need to make sure that I've got a bus pass so I can get back and forth. Yes. You'll score that. Is hospice still where you have to be diagnosed with something that is not curable? That's correct. It's a okay. terminal. Can you repeat or... the question, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the question is if hospice is still something where somebody has to has to be terminal. And so, and that that is correct. It is a terminal diagnosis. It's something that's life limiting. Um, in the eyes of Medicare, it's a six months or less. Well, terminal uh, Unless, unless you're reaffirmed. And that's correct. I was taking care of a little lady who was the hospice poster child. <laughs> They'd come in and say, no, she still has to be. You know, and she I had an aunt that was on for four and a half years. And every year on her birthday, she sent a birthday card to the, to the <laughs> doctor that told her she had three months left and told made it another year. So it's, hospice is a support yeah. system yeah. and quality of life can really change. Mm -hmm. We can't change what our disease is and our prognosis, but it can really change a lot of things. And that's what all these team members do. Mm -hmm. So besides a social worker, we have a spiritual counselor, most commonly referred to as a chaplain. It's going to meet somebody where they are at. It's Sometimes good. there's some anger that comes with having a terminal diagnosis. Sometimes there's hope that comes with it. So we're going to meet somebody where they're at and be able to support them. Uh, besides that, for our company specifically, we offer some alternative therapies Things like Reiki, acupuncture, aromatherapy, music therapy, art therapy, because whenever medications and processes and treatments are no longer where we're going to be able to cure or help, there's some alternative things because quality is what matters. And so besides that, who covers us, who pays for everything? Medicare. So Medicare does cover 100%. Uh, Medicaid is also in that same boat. Medicaid has got some other aspects of it when it comes if you're living in a skilled nursing facility. And then also private care insurances cover portions of it. To all of it, it really depends on person to person in your plan and what's covered in that. So we're going to cover all of the medications that are have to do with your diagnosis. And by that, what I mean is if your terminal diagnosis is cancer, but you're diabetic and your diabetes is not affecting that terminal diagnosis, we wouldn't cover those diabetic medications, but it would still go through your insurance how it regularly does. We're gonna cover medical equipment. So the nice thing about that, if you go to the doctor's office and you say, you know, I really need a wheelchair, we're gonna do testing, we're gonna go through processes, we're gonna figure out what that is, and three weeks later, you have yourself a brand new wheelchair that costs you $250, depending on if it's something that's gonna be covered. The nice thing about hospice, we're in a more sensitive state. And so I need a wheelchair. I need the ability to be able to have a rolling shower chair. I need the ability to be able to have an electric bed so that it can be raised and lift so we can use that. Those are things that we can get within four hours for a hospice patient. So um, typically they're delivered between two to four. We always say four because sometimes some things come from San Antonio. We all know what traffic looks like. So um, besides that, we're also going to cover all incontinent products. I don't know if anybody has ever cared for somebody 
that's had to ever use the bed pads or has ever had to use briefs or the pull-ups for those, they get expensive quick. And especially if somebody is in a state where they can't regulate and control that, you're usually changing somebody every two to four hours. And so that can financially being able to help and support someone there. And then all of our staff services are all covered as well as all of our additional therapies are covered as well for that. Um, and so the big benefit of hospice is not only for the patient, it's for their family. Nobody ever plans to be in a term. Go ahead. Is there, is there one hospice over here on Spice and Springs Road? There is a hospice. So there are over 137 hospices in Austin area that serve. And they've got patients from caseloads anywhere from five to six because they're in far outlying and they just are at one specific facility. There's ones at most of the hospitals that are around, um, Baylor Scott and White St. David's, um, Hospice Austin is here. Other home health also have hospices as well on board, uh, but we are one. We are one of those. So hospice as a whole, they're going to be sending out all of those staff members, what sets people apart, what sets us apart. We do offer the additional therapies, but we also offer continuity. You're not coming from a big pool where Mrs. Smith needs to be seen today. So one of these 12 nurses has to go. You know, Mr. Edwards needs a bath today. And so one of these 15 aides that we have is going to go, whoever can get on the list is going to make it there the quickest. It's going to be the same nurse. It's going to be the same CNA. It's going to be the same social worker. It's going to be the same chaplain. And the reason for that being, I don't know how comfortable any of you feel. I've had major surgery, but to have somebody walk into my house and say, I need you to take all your clothes off. Trust that I'm going to be able to catch you and you're going to get in. I, I had to get neurosurgery in 2017 and they sent over a little five foot 90 pounds with a backpack on and sand in her shoes girl to come help. And I was like, if I go down, we're both going to the hospital. And I, I had, I had a history in hospice and I knew that. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, you know what? It's a home health aid. They're going to know what they're doing. They've been trained. It's okay. But it is, it's scary. And whenever you create that trust with someone, that's why it feels so good whenever they're coming. And they're also creating a friend in that. Whenever we're in this really sensitive state, especially when we need help, whether it's something that's going to be a home health situation, hospice, or it's needing additional care in the house, you're trusting someone to help you. And you're getting a new friend in there. Sometimes you get to tell all your stories that your family's heard a million times. And so you get to reintroduce yourself. And it's really important that when you reintroduce yourself, that your wishes are heard and you're with people that are going to advocate for them and people that know you. And so that's why the consistency with us is really important. Hospice is available 24 hours a day. And so you have something come up at three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, you call, we send a nurse out. And so one of the big questions that gets asked, well, can you be with us 24 hours a day? There is not a hospice on the planet that can do that. And so that's whenever that's right. this young man comes into play. And so I can answer any additional questions after that. That'll be a good lead in. That's right. Lead in for you. Thank you. Thank sure. you so much. Uh, first of all, my name is Juan Martinez and I am with Homewell Care Services, which is a uh, non-medical uh, agency. Uh, however, uh, we uh, we do hire CNAs for caregivers because each case is a little different. Some of the patients require uh, more uh, attention versus just companionship. So we do from companionship to 24 seven. Uh, speaking of uh, home health, uh, we do partner with a lot of uh, agencies here in town where the home health uh, agency uh, takes care of the medical issues for the client, and if they need the assistance at home with uh, ADLs, activities of daily living, that's where we come in. Uh, hospice, the same thing. I know that they have wonderful services. Uh, my sister just went through that last year. She passed. But thanks to hospice, uh, it was a lot easier, the process, uh, through until she passed. So uh, there's a lot of value on these two companies. Uh, where I come in is, again, is the non-medical part. So a lot of the times when clients go into hospice, you know, that is a, a big burden to the families, especially because they also need rest. They need time for themselves. 
And that's where uh, a lot of the reasons why uh, Homewell is able to help uh, clients in hospice just to relieve the family from uh, being there 24 seven. So that's what we do. We have smaller shifts, you know, we have two four hour shifts all the way to 24 seven, which is day and night. Uh, we have right now uh, probably about 65 to 70 caregivers on staff, and we service Williamson and Travis counties, so it's the whole city. Uh, Homewell is, uh, we are a franchise. Homewell is nationwide. Everywhere that you go, there's a Homewell. You can also review uh, our webpage, so you can see all the reviews that we have from clients, and what has helped us a lot growing is the reviews that previous clients leave on the web. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you how good I am, and, and I think I am, right? But I think the clients are the ones speaking for themselves. You know, they're satisfied, they like what we do, then uh, they, uh, they they will hire the company. Uh, a little bit of background, you know, Ronnie Taylor, he's the owner of the agency, and uh, I work with Ronnie uh, in Ra Randall's Grocery Stores, and I retire actually from Randall's Grocery Stores. I actually run all the perishable departments, Houston, Dallas, and here in Austin. And I started with them in Dallas when uh, Tom Tom Grocery Stores, mm -hmm. some of you are familiar with Dallas, Tom Tom. Uh, I started my career with them in 1977, before she was born, he was born. Okay. <laughs> So in 77, so, you know, one of the things that I relate and I like what I do is because it's all about helping people. Am I correct? You know, uh, at work, I wasn't the smartest guy in the group, but I was able to move up because I took care of my customers and I took care of my workers. And those were the people that kind of helped me elevate to the next level, a corporate level. Here's not any different. You know, when I retired, I was doing uh, some volunteer work from the church, and I work with the seniors. And we go every week on the weekends, either to play bingo or cards, uh, devotionals on Sundays. So we did all that. I did all that. And uh, Ronnie called me one day. He goes, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. I didn't have no idea. Trust me, seven years ago, no idea. Whatever the first week. That's right. <laughs> yes. And uh, here we are after seven years. And, and again, to me, I think I relate the grocery business with this business, any business. It's all about customers, clients, and your workers. Once you take care of those two, then, then you're good and you're going to grow. Uh, I have the pleasure to belong to his uh, networking group. Uh, and I think it's been a blessing for me because I have been able to meet people like Audra. I think I met you before. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Of course, John. <laughs> you know, I look at him as a, as a brother, maybe, uh, because it, we we develop that relationship. And I also can tell you, I'm I'm, go I'm going into something with this because if somebody calls me today and they want service tonight, I want to start tonight. I need help tonight with my mom, dad, whoever. You know what? I'm going to take care of that. If I don't have the resources, guess what? I'm going to call people in my network. And we've done that so many times, especially on the weekends when people are desperate, they don't know what to do, and they need the help right now. Uh, trust me, my thing is that I will never let, let them uh, go alone. Because again, if I cannot do it, it's not about the money, then I'm going to get somebody that can help. And, and, and you can bet on that. So uh, the home care is a little different. You know, we have a, the caregivers, my caregivers, uh, they try to help in any way that they can. We develop a care plan for the client and okay. license by the state of Texas, and we have plenty of liability too, uh, but they have to follow the care plan to the T. I mean, they have to do exactly what it is on the care plan. Sometimes they, they go above and beyond taking care of the little pets, a lot of the clients have pets. <laughs> and of course, the pet thing, they need to walk and they need uh, to eat. So, you know, it, it's part of it. Whatever we can do to help that family, to help that person, 
to live a, a, a better life at home. You know, that's that's what we're here for. I'm not saying that, you know, it's not good to go to an assisted living or independent living or whatever. Uh, to me, I think, and, and I think somebody else yeah. earlier, would you rather go to a community or stay at home with 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 the caregiver, right? And and trust me, a lot of the clients that I have, the families, they live out of state. So they trust in me in taking care of mom and dad because they're they're away. And the caregiver becomes the friend. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that they can trust. And and that's what life is all about. You know, once you age, my in-laws are 92 right oh, now. I do personal personal uh, caregiving every four weeks, and they live in Corpus. So imagine, I live here on Friday after work, me and my wife. We drive five, six hours, depending on the traffic in San Antonio, which is always bad. So we get there, we take care of them uh, Friday evening, sun, Saturday, Sunday, and we come back on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, and that, that's what is part of it. I mean, to take care of people, to take care of them. Uh, would I rather do something else on my weekends? You bet you I, I, I would. Mm -hmm. But I chose that because it's, it's a joy just to help them. And to me, I think... Uh, I have a question. Based on what we know uh, and, and what, what we do, uh, we have a good reputation out there as a home care agency. Uh, the same thing with the caregivers. You know, when we started this, I did the hiring. After working so many years in retail, guess what? I did just about everything from packaging groceries, nice stocking, to corporate, right? So I learned all the faces of the grocery business. And my thing was always, I'm gonna pick the right person to work for me so that person can help me elevate to the next step. Not because I was the smartest guy. I use the same philosophy when we hire caregivers. You know, and I tell my people now that we've grown, if you wanna make a decision on how to hire a good caregiver, just think about this. Will you hire that person to take care of your mom? And if the answer is yes, Hire that person or your dad, whoever. Hire them, right? That's how you make your best decision. So uh, I don't think it's too much time, but there. We have a question from someone in the audience. Brooks, what's your yes. question? Yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, I, I'm wondering whether I'm using uh, whether I'm using hospice, whether I'm using home health, or, or whatever the service is. Is there a type of company that does care management? In other words, someone, for instance, who is looking over the um, doctor appointments. Oh, she, she needs a follow-up appointment with another doctor. Uh, she's going to need uh, transportation to get there. Somebody that oversees it. I think it's called care management. John's, uh, John's going to address that in just a few minutes. I'm doing it. So there's, so we always have to remember, and I'm going to kind of go over this and then we can go into the Q and A. Um, you always have to remember there's, there's things, your Medicare is like an insurance plan. Okay. Always remember that uh, it's going to take care of the medical side. The problem people run into, like she's mentioning is there's a lot on the non-medical side that, that comes, becomes an issue. That's one with the home, home care uh, caregiver support, personal assistance, things like that. Your medical side is the home health and the hospice. What she's looking for, there's two different types of options. So um, concerning helping you kind of navigate that, it's more, if it's on the medical side, um, we're either looking at a geriatric care manager or we're looking at a chronic care manager. So chronic care management is covered under Medicare. So if you have chronic conditions, you can actually have a doctor or a clinician available to you uh, 24 hours a day um, that will help you with navigating these things. Um, it is covered 100%. A geriatric care manager is a private pay type situation. You would pay for a nurse to go to the doctor's appointment, take the notes, and give those to the family. So the, the 
the chronic care manager would get the notes from the physician and share them with the family. But if you actually need someone to physically take them, the geriatric care manager would, would do that with a nurse or they would contract with a home care company to say, okay, I need you to take Susie to the doctor. So it, it depends on really what you're trying to do there, but it would either be a geriatric care manager or a chronic care manager. Well, let me ask you a question. I think uh, Joe, I would ask if there was a... Uh, yeah, Joe, uh, just a minute. Let me ask, please follow up with all that. three phases of care? Because there, there are such agencies, I work with one, that they basically, they are the consultants. And they manage from uh, the medical side, financial side, hospice, and home care. When it comes to home care, we partner with them, and they call yeah. the Jones Point. Yeah. The geriatric. Yeah, care. geriatric. Yeah. We, we know people like that. And again, you know, our goal is to make sure that you're taking care of whatever the need is. And if we don't do it, we find somebody that can do it. Uh, let me talk real quick about the pay because we're not like a home health or hospice. Our, our uh, agency is private pay, and I don't think that you can find agencies that take Medicare. I don't think Medicare pays for home care because it's non-medical. However, we uh, we belong to the VA uh, system, and there's only a few companies, home care companies, that are approved by the VA to take care of uh, veterans, our veterans. And uh, so we, we do help families with the VA system to navigate through the, uh, the system in reality to, to be able to get aid in attendance or some kind of care. Uh, long-term care insurance, we also accept that. And the long-term uh, basically is it, it's not really hard. It's uh, in, initially it's a little tough, but if you give me the name of your uh, long-term care insurance, then we do all the paperwork and we can file it. So you don't have to worry about, you know, filing and uh, all the paperwork that it requires. So that, that's what we do in a nutshell. But, um, Joe, may I go back to Joe again? John. Uh, uh, Joe Brown? Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you can give me a call and I'll, I'll help you navigate that. And, and if we can do it with chronic care, I always look at how can we do this as cheaply as possible, mm -hmm. right? So if we can get it covered 100% under chronic care management, that gives her everything she needs, and that's what we would do. If not, then we would look at a geriatric care management. So is either one, do either one of those management systems that you spoke of, do either one of those do things like, uh, oh, the PT didn't show up today. Oh, the so and so didn't show up today, and then do the follow up on that. Yeah, both both of them would do that. The chronic care or the geriatric care would. So both of them have clinicians that are overseeing all that. And John would get a phone call and say, "Hey, your nurse, your your PT guy didn't show up. What's going on? When is he coming?" You know. So yes, they they would help with that. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're the first person that I've heard say that you have a two-hour shift. Is that correct? How is how is that how is that funded? Is it Medicare, Medicaid, or self-pay? No self-pay. Okay. And uh, a lot of the companies nowadays, with the situation with the labor, you know, a lot of people don't want to do that. You know, the caregivers always looking for the bigger ship. Right. My thinking is, you know. And here's where we solve problems. You know, if I have a caregiver that her shift uh, starts at 10 and she's only working or he six four hours, hours, four hours, and this client wants just somebody to help get up, get dressed, and that's it, two hours, mm -hmm. then we kind of, that same caregiver will go there before going to her regular client. So the, the whole point is, is never to say no again. And, and let me, uh, Again, let you know that we will never let you without care, even if it's two hours. I know companies that they, there's one that is called senior health and seniors, two hours. They take the smaller shifts because they're small agency. So if I cannot do it, somebody else is going to do it. I, I guarantee We'll find you the resources. We'll find you somebody. I have a question for Juan, and then I didn't catch your name. John. 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 Okay. Uh, 
Juan, what uh, does your company charge now for a two-hour shift yeah. and for a 24-7 shift? Okay, so we, we have rates depending on the type of theater. Uh -huh. So we start at 32 an hour, and it's the same rate whether it's weekend or weekdays. So a lot of the times, you know, uh, and coming from the grocery retail business, you learn to always keep an eye on your comp competition, right? Well, what is uh, Amazon's charging for this? What's that the price of milk, eggs, whatever? You know, we all, it's, it's, it's a weekly thing. So we, Ronnie and I, we, uh, we make a point to do at least twice a year. We don't do it every month to call different companies. And we have basically the rates that they charge per hour, minimums. And some companies actually charge you uh, initial fee for the paperwork. For us, it's none of that. You know, I want to charge you starting $32 an hour, depending. Now, uh, if the client needs transfers uh, with Hoyer leaves, things like that, then it's going to be a little bit more, 35 But we keep the same rate everywhere. Uh, the only time that we charge overtime uh, is when it's a major holiday and the time and a half is not for us, it's for the caregiver. Mm -hmm. So 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I think it is the right thing. And most of the clients, they understand that, you okay. know, that uh, it's going to be time and a half. But we never raise the rates to them uh, unless inflation goes crazy. But uh, we try to keep it up. Minimum, simple, one price. And so for 24-7, is it still $32 an hour? For 24-7, sometimes we, uh, depending, you know, a lot of the times if we have, a lot of the customers don't want too many caregivers in their house. 24-7, if you look at it this way, it's 168 hours per week, mm -hmm. right? It's 24-7. So think about it. Everybody works 40 hours. To staff that, you need... 40 hours, you need five and a half people. Mm -hmm. That's what it takes, mm -hmm. right? Too many people come to the house. So sometimes uh, clients decide to go, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, where it's gonna be live-in, mm -hmm. okay? And when you're talking about live-in, which is 24-hour care, uh, there's there's different rules, totally different rules and different policing that I'm able to discuss with the clients. Because part of those rules, you know, based on the state, that caregiver that works living in a home, she has to have at least five minimum hours of sleep at night. And they have to have their own- I should hope so. Okay. Yeah, oh, good. of course, yes. So, so that's why we can do different things with the pricing because okay. I'm not gonna charge you for the hours that she's or he's sleeping, right? So yeah, it's it's all custom price based on the need of the client. And and the care. Because you've, yeah. you've got and that's one thing when you're talking about home care, like Juan is saying, you need to ask a lot of questions because there are a lot of companies that will charge an upfront application mm -hmm. fee. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of companies that will say, Well, we only do six hour minimums. Mm -hmm. There are companies that say, Yes, we'll do two hours, but we do it at a hundred dollars an hour. Exactly. <laughs> you know, okay. so you, you really have to sit down and have a consultation okay. with that company. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And and John, um, <clears throat> I guess my brain hadn't quite plugged in at the beginning. I didn't catch exactly how your home health care relates to Medicare and hospice, because I thought you said um, you have to prove to Medicare that the patient is improving. So that doesn't sound like hospice. It's not hospice. Ah. Yeah, we're home health care. So uh, with Medicare, we've got to make progress. So you are covered by Medicare. Speech. And yeah, what's the name of your therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy? What's the name of your company? Capital Home Health. And um, several of our members have used Capital Home Health. The most recent, Carol Garl, she, she writes about. Um, <laughs> about your service, oh. um, and uh, she she is uh, very opinionated, so her <laughs> recommendation comes <laughs> comes very uh, strong. Yes, you want that recommendation. So it's all to say, John and I do just work with one of your your members. Um, she's having knee surgery today, and hoping it goes well, but. 
you know, from here, she's going to go, she's getting her knee surgery, then she's going to go to rehab. And then John will pick her up, uh, helping her once she gets back home. Um, and then we've also lined up the home care. So she has a speedy recovery as fast as possible. And Joanna, so, oh, I didn't say her name. <laughs> Something to touch on the question that you asked. So home health and hospice. So home health is curative care. Hospice is comfort care. Yeah. And whenever we talk about that somebody has to um, be evaluated, same thing with our evaluation, um, we have to go off of medical documentation. So we have to see that it's proven medically. You can't just call us and say, mom has Parkinson's, dad has cancer. And so what we do is whenever we gather those medical records, it not only allows us to prove it, but it also gives us a chance to be able to talk to the family about not only, you know, what is the diagnosis of cancer or the diagnosis of having renal failure. What, is, what does that look like? But what does it look like specific to that patient? Mm -hmm. And so whenever we're doing these election periods, for you, it's every 60 days. For us, the first two are 90 days, which is where the six months or less comes in. <laughs> but for curative care, Medicare wants to see that you're documenting. We started here and we returned to baseline. We've had an improvement. Us putting money into this is worth continuing the care and where we're going. Whenever it comes to hospice care, we're switching to comfort. And so can we still do things like PT, OT, and speech therapy? Yes, but that's going to be for safety um, and maybe for helping, especially if we're contracted, being able to get those muscles relaxed with help with our ADLs. But you cannot be on home health and be on hospice at the same time because it's two separate pieces. So for curative, we're getting better. For comfort, we're keeping you as comfortable as long as possible, as long as your disease process goes. Go ahead. And then home health for everything outside that's not medical. Yes, that's correct. The activities of daily living, the dressing, the bathing, the transferring, the companionship, the transportation. And the, it, it works the, the house. Yeah, it works the same uh, way as hospice and, and uh, home health. If I'm not making uh, your loved one's life better, then it was a used to have a caregiver. So our goal is always to make the client life much better, quality of life at home where they belong. There's another vocabulary word I should probably just Google, mm -hmm. the palliative care. Well, is that so, so all, separate? all palliative care, all hospice is palliative care, not all palliative care is hospice. So <laughs> best way to explain it. Uh, so for palliative care, you have a life limiting diagnosis but you have a prognosis that's longer than six months. Somebody that has a dementia diagnosis, somebody that has Parkinson's, chances are everything that's gonna happen, all the comorbidities from that is eventually going to proceed and we will begin down that journey for the hospice side of things. If you have longer than a year prognosis, Medicare is going to say, okay, you have a terminal diagnosis. However, with home health, we can continue to be independent by having our physical therapy, our occupational speech therapist. We can make sure that we're doing right at home, that we're able to continue on and be doing well for as long as we have that period. You can still continue to seek aggressive treatment that's on the curative side of things. Palliative care is going to follow that through. Whenever palliative goes into hospice, we're seeking aggressive symptom management at that point. So that's kind of where that is. And the and I'll answer it. So one other thing for that. Um, we all go hand in hand, something that we don't talk about very often. People come off hospice. Mm -hmm. Someone's at home, their loved one's caring for them, and they've been at home eating their Lance orange crackers and drinking apple juice and just kind of getting by. We're not going out anymore. We've become kind of secluded. We reach out to John and we say, hey, I could really use a caregiver in the home or something just to help mm -hmm. us getting around. We've got a caregiver that comes. If that's... Um, if we need more of a skilled situation where somebody can be there to be able to look around us more medically, can we get placement in an assisted living, in a personal care home, in a memory care unit to be able to do that? They can, you know, all of a sudden now we're eating more. We're in assisted living because our meals are prepared for us. Mm -hmm. We've got the support of being there. I'm not calling my daughter 15 times in the middle of the night because I heard a sound. I'm not sure what that is. What's my appointment? And at that point in time, we're discharging off a hospice and we reach out to a home health and say, hey, we're still having some trouble with some gait, shuffling around, furniture surfing. We need to make sure that we've got the right equipment in place. This is what we've been working on, but let us hand you off so that way you have 
a resource mm -hmm. in the community. So, and you had a question? No, I think I had you clarifying between palliative care, palliative care and hospice care. If there, mm -hmm. if like, it doesn't sound like the case of what you just said, but like palliative care is where people come off of that versus hospice people don't. But so people come, could come off of both palliative care and hospice care. That's correct. Okay. Right. And so, and note too, whenever you're in hospice care, if something, it's all about you making the decisions for yourself as long as you can. That's why we really push advanced directives and planning because nobody wants to have a crisis. They just want to have a conversation. And so whenever something like that happens um, and we're in that palliative care state, sometimes, or we're in hospice, we can say, hey, we just had this new study come out. It's for something that's really rare. It's our specific type of glioblastoma, something that's, you know, that you hear that and you just think that's it. You know, we've had a study that's come up and they said that we're eligible for it. Just charge, just charge off hospice. That's fine. We want you, we want to support you to be able to absolutely exhaust, bring the absolute last drop out of that rag. So that way you feel good about it because in actuality, this is your life and your healthcare. This is you recovering. This is, you know, this is you live in that dash in between one date and the next. And if you want to say, this is where I'm at, I'm ready to be comfortable. Here we are. And then I change my mind. Absolutely, do everything that you can. I, I just want to kind of tie something up here too, is that home health, hospice, and even home care, they go wherever you are, okay? So that is home, that is independent living, that's in your apartments, that's assisted living, memory care. So you can need home health and, and, and get it wherever you're at. You can need hospice, get it wherever you're at. <laughs> care and get it wherever you're yeah. at. To your point, John, just uh, I just wanted to add this. You know, when people ask, "Well, what is your minimum?" I only need two hours, right? Three hours. You know, what I've seen in seven years is that the biggest issues with seniors is two things: one is loneliness, and the other one's falls and falls and loneliness. And if you think that, well, what's the career we're going to be doing? Three hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours. If nothing else. And when I was a lot younger, I saw life insurance. And it is hard to sell life insurance. You're sending a piece of paper, right? That you cannot use right now, later on. It's the same thing. You, you, you buy basically care to prevent those things. The falls, which is the number one reason why uh, adults past and loneliness and I see that all so think about your know, love but every situation is different right so maybe the family comes during the day and they only need help getting up and that's fine but if they they're alone uh, there's, there's more than just getting them ready in dress <laughs> any other questions on the line? Any other questions online? No. No, that's great. So I just want to kind of wrap up and just remind everybody that home health is covered under Medicare. I have a question. Yes, All right, we have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we are going to be meeting at Refill on Sunday. Could you all send through uh, Joanna uh, your brochures so that we can have something, a hard piece of paper? Yeah. yeah. These brochures. Sure, we'll take care of it. Yeah, I brought extra too. Joanna will take care of it. Joanna will. Thank you very care. much. Okay. So again, remember that the home health is is the physical therapy, the occupational therapy, the speech therapy. It it again, it, they're not going to be with you, and, and a lot of people get this confused. They're not going to be with you twenty four hours a day. So just because you're discharging, don't expect them to be there to take care of everything. Um, same with hospice. Uh, and palliative care. So a lot of times you're looking for a home health and a home care or a hospice and a home care. And yes, you can come off of both and, and go back and forth. Uh, I've helped thousands of families get on hospice um, because mom's just doing really bad after a stroke. Um, and, and then gradually get to the point where, wow, mom's doing better. Let's get her on home health. Let's really try to get her stronger. I've actually seen a senior go from this, this is catastrophic 
we're moving them into a nursing home under Medicaid on hospice to a year later, they're moving into an independent living mm -hmm. without home care, without hospice and without any care. It can happen, you know, but the point being is the group, the senior industry always has to work together to stay focused on the seniors' best outcomes. And I think, you know, we have a really good group here um, that I think probably cares a lot more than most. Um, I think you could hear that in everybody's voice. Um, it's not about money. It's about how do we help? And then we'll, don't worry about money. We, we're going to help. And then we'll figure all that. Absolutely. So, I greatly appreciate everybody today. From Juan, aren't you the one that mentioned about long-term care yes. insurance? Yes. And you've had life insurance in the past, you said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And would you charge to look at a long-term care policy? No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, that's that's okay. part of the service. All right. So somebody I, knows I have me. one that I have had someone, you know, say, well, you know, whatever, yeah. but I'd like to have someone again yeah. look at it and say when the day comes. Yeah. All they need is to call their company. Okay. And say Homewell, home well, uh, I give permission to Homewell to look into my benefits. That's all. It depends. It depends. If you're just yeah, having a question, one on one, you can, yeah, yeah, call. Call. Sure. You can call me, and yeah, I can definitely. Yeah. I did that with somebody you can else. Call my cell phone. Okay. Okay. You can do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll all do what we can to help. And you said there's a an umbrella company called Senior. Services or senior uh, so we we are part of a networking group called Senior Industry Services. So it is a website. Yeah, you'll see a lot of blog content yeah, on there. Really you'll also know. see some yeah. other businesses on there. Yeah. So if you're looking for a resource, you go there. Look there. It, it's it's free. Give that again. Senior Senior Industry Services dot com. Is that uh, National Group or uh, Austin Group? Is that a local group yep. or yeah. A, yeah. Okay. yeah? So it started out as being a networking group. We just kind of started doing COVID networking and it just keeps growing. Uh, so right. uh, <clears throat> John, how does that senior industry service differ from Oasis Senior Advisory? So it's just a website where you can read blog content and you can see different businesses listed. Um that that's really all that is. Um you know, it, the biggie is for us as as senior experts, senior industry uh, partners, is that we all work together, um, and that's the big piece of it is that we all network together and try to try to make it a great place to age in Central Texas. Mm -hmm. That's so much better than just competing. Thank you. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> yeah. We don't. I, I oh, no. the group that. I think we're associated with, we don't compete. Yeah, no. We solve problems. Yeah. That's it. It's all we do. It's all and the nice thing about that, so we have somebody that comes to us. Uh, we had someone that came that was native Vietnamese speaking. They are native Vietnamese speaking. Their children are, their granddaughters trying to search in between. There's other, like I said, there's over a hundred hospice groups that are here. And if we've got one that we know that a nurse and an aide is going to be native Vietnamese speaking, that is a better situation for them. My census doesn't matter when it's someone else's life and their quality. And so we're going to find the best resource for someone. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs>